with the girls I said I'm feeling great Oh, the darkness down from Amsterdam. I'm Marijke Marie and today I have a special guest. I'm so honored, I'm so blessed to have a big reggae star, Mr. Heinz from Steel Pools, to have a small talk with him about, we're going to talk about the pandemic that happened, that makes a lot of things change in the community. How do you experience the pandemic, Mr. Heinz? Well, Good day, good evening to the world so far, and right here in the Netherlands as well, and right across the Suriname too. <laughs> the pandemic has been a milestone of a negative experience in my life and also in the life of the world. But um, when it comes to my life, I mean, by the first recognized month of the pan pandemic, which was in March 2020, I lost uh, one of my best friends and also I lost my brother and then just recently um, I lost my mother too to the pandemic so it, it, you know, it lasted that long you know, my mother was approaching her 99th birthday within weeks and you know, the virus got hold of her too so if you're asking me about the pandemic that's been my personal experience, experience. Um, in regards to the industry, the music industry, it's been a major setback where no one's worked for so many years. Two years is a long time when it comes to the music industry. And um, Steel Pulse finally got back to work at the very beginning of March 2022 in Mexico. And um, it was very far away. We haven't seen each other literally for two years and we had to formulate ourselves right there in Mexico within four, within a four hour rehearsal, yeah. is what I'm saying. Um, you know, um, everybody's in different parts of the world. Our drummer's in Jamaica, our horn player's in the United States, you know, our bass player's in the United Kingdom, and myself is in the Caribbean as well, in the French Caribbean. So, not seeing each other, it meant um, extra hard work and extra hard focus to remember the songs, yeah. and to remember the, the energy behind the songs as well because it's like that, you know, you, you, you build up a momentum when you're performing all the time. All of a sudden, that's cut short. And, mm. it, you, you know, we also had an album out that came out in 2019, Mass Manipulation, and that was put on hold. Didn't get the publicity it deserved because of the pandemic. So that's what the pandemic did to Steel Pulse right now. So, and... Um 
the next question or the best thing that, that I can ask is about being back on stage. How does it feel to be back on stage to have your public, your fans? It feels, I mean, two feelings about it because, in all honesty, mm -hmm. when we stop touring, I half missed the road. I had time to spend more time with my family, with family yeah. had more time to um, do other projects besides what Steel Pulse was about, and it gave me um, a different um, projects, a different kind of experience to get myself involved in. I mean, I was also doing a lot of fine art painting, you know, I was doing portraits of various people, you know, your Malcolm X's, you know, your Chadwick Bosman's, and your Martin Luther King's, your Joma Kenyatta's, yeah. um, Muhammad Ali, all these paintings were just coming out of the pipelines that I had, you know, um, in my mind and put them literally on canvas. Mm -hmm. So it became a reality for me. I sort of got myself involved in a different kind of experience. So. All this happened because of the pandemic. Of the pandemic. So the pandemic has two sides. It brings people together. Yeah. Or it takes people away. Yes. Or you have more time to, as what you said, spending time with the family because you're a busy man. Yeah. Well, what I think the pandemic has done in a more, I'd say, urgent kind of way and a more evident kind of way, mm -hmm. it had people stop and start to think. Mm -hmm. You know, when I look at the racism that's been taking place in the United States, for example, and across the world with Brexit, with the United Kingdom, yes. and certain situations that's happened in France with Marie Le Pen on the rise right, and the politician, yeah. you know, um, what the pandemic did was have everybody trapped in their homes and saw the reality of racism for what it really is. And one significant incident took place, um, it was, May 25th, 2020, when we witnessed um, the choking of a black Blood, man yeah. in the United States. You know, um, it was a tragic, very sad experience for all of us to witness it. And I think justice was served with George Floyd, the name of the individual. Justice was served because the whole world watched and saw a man struggle for his life for nine minutes and 29 seconds. And I think if that was not recorded and for the whole world to have nothing else to do but to watch that, I think those police officers or the police officer involved would have walked scot free. So the, the, the pandemic sort of brought about justice, justice for a change. For um, it, it sort of um, accented Black Lives Matter so to speak. That's true. So, the, and it also got people thinking differently. You know, the whole idea of the, the wearing the mask and not wearing the mask and taking vaccines and not taking vaccines. The people started to rise up and say, well, enough is enough of how things are the way you want to be. It's going to be our way now. And as you can see, we had a prime minister in England that well, was supposed to be thrown out of office because of all the parties he was throwing during the COVID period, yeah. and um, all of a sudden, you know, he changed his tune just to stay in power by having by liberating all of the United Kingdom. So it showed me right there. This is what I keep expressing now. Once I do performances on stage, that it's about you, the people, and it's about people power. Now, don't let the system fool you. You got more power than you think. I've met your son. Didn't know it was your son. He told me. But he is a rapper. Yeah. Are you proud of it? I'm proud of him. Because he's walking, he's on your <laughs> footsteps. I'm proud of him. Um, what surprised me is that um, I give him a subject. Yeah. And he goes and he studies the subject and he comes back with all the words I'm expecting him to say. Um, he didn't go through the kind of formal schooling that I went to. So his, a lot of his um, intuition and the way he expressed himself has really come from the street. So, I mean, I featured him on the Mass Manipulation album. Um, he was on a track called uh, World Gone Mad. And he was also on a track called Higher Love, Rasta Love. And all those lyrics are all his own. And, you know, I'm very impressed with what he came back uh, to deliver. And I only wish he could 
do more of Steel Forces projects where he takes over from, from, from where, where I left off as far as what I have to say. But he's in a world where, you know, the, the rap and the gangster and the women and all that kind of stuff is part of the youth experience. But I really like to know that he could do more political stuff. Yesterday, mm -hmm. after your son, we talk about your son, but now we're going to talk about Naimiha. How Nahi. did you ex Naimiha yesterday mm -hmm. night? You was Nahi, like, that's the name of it? Naimiha, they I said. call it Ninja Man. <laughs> <laughs> Ninja Man. Ninja Man. Naimiha. <laughs> Naimiha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you experience the performance in Nijmegen and Amsterdam? Just maybe the vibe? How did you find it about the vibe? Or well, the turnout in Nijmegen mm -hmm. was excellent. Yeah. I don't remember performing there before. No, it was the, the first sounds. time in Nijmegen. First Nijmegen. time there. Yeah. And the, the, the performance, the, the energy's been, like I said to you, the energy's been building up each time we perform on stage. I think uh, Nijmegen was at a good show. But Amsterdam probably was a better show. And I think tomorrow night in the in, other town in called Groninger, Groninger <laughs> was supposed to be a better show to when we perform. Because it's all about us, you know, getting us a chance to rehearse, practice, jam with each other, feel each other out, and hope that we improve as each night goes by. So uh, the best of Steel Pops is yet to come. Um, so that's the thing that I'm going to ask now. What's the, what we can expect from Steel Pops? What more? More fight, more energy, what? more everything inside. Well, revolution. Revolutions and everything else. When it comes to Steel Pulse, I always thought our style of music is on a cutting edge. I, I always thought and always think that our subject matters, the songs that we choose, the subjects that we choose to sing about, are also different than normally than what everybody else does as well. So, um, I'm expecting this time around for more people to gravitate to Steel Pulse than ever before. They've seen what's out there and they've seen what's been out there for quite some time. And I think we're ripe enough now for people to start seeing the difference between ourselves and the other bands that are out there. I'm not saying that we're better than any, any other band because, you know, every, you know, all these bands that are out there are extremely talented. But I, you know, I honestly think that what we have to say um, as subject matters um, is a cut different than what's normally out there. Yeah. For example, um, Mass Manipulation was an album that was written over a number of years. You know, the, the you know, songs like um, Black and White Oppressors, I wrote that song years ago, but never recorded it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And we have songs like Mass Manipulation and then The World Gone Mad, that's on the album. Higher Love, Rasta Love, um, Nations of the World, all these songs were written towards the end of the recording experience of the band. And throughout all these years of recording the album, I was praying and hoping that nobody takes those subject matters and turn them into songs. Yeah. And that prayer was answered, that we went through so many years of recording and putting them on the, the back burner to bring them together as a, as a package for albums, for a track to be an albums, and to know that the subject matters were still not tackled or handled by anybody else. So that's a, that's a good thing, I think. And <clears throat> so we hope, or we are keeping the support mm -hmm. from people, because without people, there's no, that's what you're singing, there's no music. Mm -hmm. If there's no music, there's no life. Because music gives you the energy to do things. Mm -hmm. And what, uh, uh, what's so nice of music, I don't know how artists get the intuition about putting things on paper and singing. The real thing that's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. How do you do it? Is it something that you're sitting and you get something in your mind? And it, it's, it's like that. It's yeah. also to do with having conversational pieces with people that I meet on my journey. Yeah. And hear what's, what's the beat in their bonnet, what's, what's um, provoking them, what's bothering them. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like I said, you know, one of the biggest things that we've been seeing throughout the world of late is uh, racism especially, like I said, with the election of Donald Trump, 
yeah. and the messages that were perpetuated during his administration and the same thing that took place with Brexit and all that. So, you know, we saw prejudice, you know, being, you know, a primary subject. We saw poverty being a primary subject. We saw police brutality being, a, you know, a, a subject as well. Things like that. And the list goes on. So we have a tendency to see something and magnify it, amplify it, and bring it to the, the forefront of everyone's consciousness. Most of the time, some songs, things are not happening yet, but they already know it. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. Looks like <coughs> Bob Marley singing about there's a mystic, mm -hmm. uh, there's a natural mystic mm -hmm. going through the air. Right. And that's what's happening to us. Mm -hmm. That was the COVID. Right. So then you're thinking about how they do it. I'm still imagine how. Well, it's... Things can be prophetical, as you as you um, as you are trying to, you know, um, convey. You know, having said that, it's it's about it's a it's a instinct you have about reading the world and predicting what you see can happen. When I wrote Wild Goose Chase, mm -hmm. it was all about cloning. It was all about test tube babies. It was all about science and getting happening. involved with all kinds of stuff. And lo and behold, this is what's going, what's on, going on. on. We yeah. talk about mass manipulation, which is a new album. You know that that title was in the you know in the making for quite some time, and when you look at it, the world right now, the world has been manipulated, manipulated. You know, on a great scale. Yeah, they are you turning know? us into robots. Robots, that's right. Yeah. But maybe I should have called the album "Mask Manipulation" because <laughs> everybody had to wear a mask. Yeah, but, but, hey. <laughs> yeah, but you can see it also in the music industry. Mm -hmm. You know, everything is going with a computer. Yeah. For being on at back of the drums mm -hmm. as what is happening. That's that's right. music. That's music. But now they are using the computer because mm -hmm. they are, mm -hmm. as you say, manipulating mm -hmm. us to become or will be a robot. Everything's a robotic. But what I find that we need to do is to try and know how to use this kind of technology. You know, it, you know, it's it's there for us to use. So there's a way of using it, and still try to let the music come over authentic, and let it still be part of something that's more heart rendering than mind, mind rendering. rendering. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And like I said, subject matters will play a part. Once you've got a subject matter, and subject matter has you know authenticity to it, you find that the instruments you try to choose around it will be selected on that merit. Is what I'm saying. So I don't really think there's anything wrong with technology, so to speak. It's how we use it, and we, we there's there's no doubt about it. We're gonna have to use it. And I tell you why I'm saying that. Um, there's so many songs that I've written um, over the past five, ten years, where or be part of, where I was not literally there in the studio with someone, where I sent my vocals yeah. down electronic via email, via whatever social media provider there is for someone to take the voice yeah. and put it on their machine and record. record it, yeah. Because there's no way I could have been there physically to record it. Yeah. Just like a guitar, I would want a guitar from my guitar player, he's all the way in California. Yeah. So he plays his guitar and I take it and I use it in my studio in Birmingham, England. So, so there's so, the positive side of it. Yes, there's, so there's a positive side yeah. of it. It's all about communication. It's all about, you know, like I said, we, we, we technology had us watch a man mm -hmm. got choked to death on TV. On TV, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So if there wasn't technology... If, was if that was not there, there'd be a lot of people walking free. free. So we That's can't true. fight technology. We've got to know how to use it. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. We've got to know how to use it. I hear people fight technology all the time, and then they say, uh, and the next thing, beep, beep, and they pick up their mobile phone and say, yes, technology, technology right here. So yeah. I said, what the hell is that about? You're fighting technology, and then they're using a mobile, mobile phone. phone. Yeah, that's true. You know, let's make sense out of nonsense. Now. Yeah. So, Mr. Heinz, mm -hmm. it was, a, let me say, I'm so blessed to have a talk with you as the steel pulls, the big man, steel pulls, big man, because there are two of you, the mm -hmm. real steel pulls. Mm -hmm. So it was a pleasure for me for having you or have the time for us 
to do something to let people know from the radio, or my radio station, Radio Mart in Amsterdam. And really, I love it. I appreciate Thank it you. that you make time for us yeah. for having a conversation. Yeah. yeah, I love it. And okay. let me say this. Yeah. This the, year yeah. is the 40th anniversary since we recorded the True Democracy album and had it released, right? And also, it's the 40th anniversary when Steve Pulse first set foot on the, in the country Suriname. It was in 1982, was our first time there in Suriname. So we give thanks for that. And we, we see every day as a blessing. We thank Holland, the Netherlands, whatever you want to call this place, um, for being so supportive ever since the days of Bob Marley when we first came here in 1978. And we've always been, you know, it's always been appreciated by us that Holland has supported us for so long and that the, the, the audience is still pouring in no matter how long we've been absent. All right? Respect. Yes, respect. Yeah, this is David Dredd of Steel Pulse and he tuned into Radio Mart. Check out Royal Voices, 10 till midnight every Monday. Come along and party. It's unity for everybody. <laughs> yes, Royal Voices, Radio Mart. Check it out. Ciao. Them dead on the pulpit, they mockery, they preach. I said, death, 